Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking the very first look at the upcoming Retro Flag GPI Case 2. Now this has been a long time coming and we definitely have some awesome upgrades with the new GPI Case 2. We've got a higher resolution display, USB Type-C, a built-in 4000 mAh rechargeable battery, and it's no longer powered by the Raspberry Pi Zero. And in fact, this was well under development before the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, so they opted to use the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. So this is powered by the CM4. We basically have a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of a Game Boy with this unit. Retro Flag is going to be offering two different SKUs of the GPI Case 2. You can opt for the model without the dock or you can get the Deluxe Edition which does include the dock. And with that dock it enables HDMI out. It's also got a couple extra USBs and we can charge it directly from there. So I've had the GPI Case 2 in my possession for the last two weeks. I've been messing around with the Deluxe Edition, and in this video we're going to do a quick unboxing of the Standard Edition. And really, the only difference between the two is the Deluxe Edition includes the dock. Inside of the box, you're going to get your instruction manual that shows you how to do a full assembly and install your CM4 inside of the GPI Case 2. And you will have to install a script to get everything working correctly. It's actually really easy to do. You can head over to the Retro Flag website and download it there. And with that script, it's just going to get sound working, display, and our safe shutdown. Plus, if you opted for the Deluxe Edition, we can do HDMI out of that dock, which is really a big plus with the GPI case, too. As you can see, it resembles the original GPI case, but there are a few differences here. On the bottom, we do have USB Type-C for charging up that internal battery. We also got our 3.5 millimeter audio jack, volume control over here, and our contrast slider over here for the built-in screen. And we do have a much higher resolution screen with this. Around back we have L1 and R1 and they've made it really easy to install a Compute Module 4 inside of here. And they have left room so we can add a heatsink to that CM4. But instead of having that removable cart, it's basically just a compartment. We can snap our CM4 right in here and easily access our micro SD card. Real quick, I'll just give you a closer look around the unit. Up front here we have our D-pad, Start Select, two extra menu buttons, and our action buttons, A, B, X, and Y. Over on the left hand side, contrast for the built in screen. Over on the right hand side, we have our volume control. And up top, we have our power switch. I just grabbed the other unit that I already have set up. And as you can see, the CM4 sits in here really nicely. You don't have to remove any screws at all to get this set up. It just snaps right in here. And we do have room for a heatsink on that CM4. I need to do a little more testing, but I think I found the perfect heatsink for this. So I will make another video soon. And the SD card can be swapped out at any time because they're using a hinge type SD card slot right in here. Very easy to get to even with that CM4 fully installed. I do want to make it perfectly clear that this is not made to be taken apart. You don't have to take any screws out whatsoever to assemble it, but I did want to pull the back off just to show you everything here. As you can see, we do have that built-in 4000 mAh battery. It's going to be charged over USB Type-C. And this area right up here is where our CM4 is going to snap into place. We've also got access to that SD card slot. And yeah, I mean, everything looks really nice in here. I think they've done a great job putting this thing together. Now when it comes to the dock, this thing is actually pretty awesome. You're going to set your GPI Case 2 right in here. It's going to connect to that USB Type-C on the bottom. And around back, we have two USB 2.0 ports. We've also got USB Type-C for charging the internal battery and full-size HDMI out. That way, all we need to do is dock this right next to our monitor or our television and connect a Bluetooth controller to it. That way, we can play on the big screen very, very easily. So what I have installed right now is Recall Box. You could also run RetroPie on here, but I did want to give you a quick look at this screen because it has been upgraded. It's actually a higher resolution 3-inch IPS display instead of a 2.8 in the original GPI case. And on paper, it might not sound like much, you know, going from 2.8 to 3 inches. But if you're used to using the original GPI case and you move over to this, this screen actually looks much bigger and it's definitely a lot cleaner. Doing a quick comparison here between the original GPI case and the GPI case 2. This runs the CM4, so we definitely have a lot more power when it comes to emulation. We've got a 3 inch 640 by 480 IPS display, built in 4000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, save energy function, turbo button, and our hotkey. Those are the two extra menu buttons right in the middle there. Dock support with HDMI out, and we're using USB Type-C. I was actually surprised to see that the internal battery on this thing will actually charge at 12.5 watts. We're sitting at 12.7 with this kilowatt meter, but we should get a pretty fast charge on this little battery. 
So of course, since we're using that more powerful CM4, we're going to be able to do the lower end stuff just fine. When it comes to NES, Super Nintendo, you want to do some Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance like you're seeing running here, Neo Geo, FBA, there's some MAME stuff that works really well on this. All the lower end stuff is going to be no problem for this, but uh, you know, I definitely want to test out some Dreamcast, PSP, some PlayStation, and some N64, but real quick, I wanted to show you this turbo button in action. So it's off right now. If I hold this button, nothing's going to happen. If I press the turbo button, nothing's going to happen. What you need to do is actually hold the turbo button and then press the corresponding button you want to turn into a turbo button, and it works out really well, especially for shooting games like Metal Slug. So here we are with some higher end stuff. First thing I wanted to test here was some Dreamcast with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm actually using the Flycast core here. You could go with Redream, but uh, Flycast is actually working out really well on this lower resolution screen. Moving over to some PSP, we have Soul Calibur Broken Destiny. 1x resolution using the OpenGL back end. Easier to run PSP games actually work really well on the CM4 at the stock clocks. If you want to go with a little higher upscale, you can do an overclock, but I think this looks really good on this smaller screen. And of course, we do have amazing PlayStation 1 emulation. Ever since the Raspberry Pi 2, we've been able to get some really good PS1 going, and the CM4 is no different. Alright, so now it's time to move over to the dock, and what I have here is HDMI and just power plugged into that little dock. I've also got a Bluetooth controller connected to the GPI case too. I put this in sleep mode by pressing the sleep button on the top, and as soon as I plug it in, it moves over to HDMI. And this is actually running at 720p over HDMI instead of the built-in screen resolution, but there was one thing that I needed to change, and hopefully this is fixed in the final firmware, but I did have to go into the audio settings and put my sound output to HDMI so we got sound out of this monitor. Otherwise, I wasn't getting any sound, but you know, this could definitely be fixed down the road pretty easily with a firmware update. I think all of this is actually set up in the script, and the one I'm using right now is kind of a beta version, but, you know, everything is working pretty decently except for that. We'll move over to a little bit of N64, and like I mentioned, I do have this Bluetooth controller connected to the GPI case 2 over Bluetooth. And yeah, I mean, N64 does run pretty decently on the CM4. Uh, there's been lots of updates to emulation on the Raspberry Pi 4, and that's basically what we have in here. So we are getting some really good N64 performance. You can use the Parallel Core, Mupin 64 Plus is what I'm using right now, but as you can see, with Diddy Kong Racing, this is perfectly playable. Let's test out some PSP over HDMI. Now, I was thinking about this, and one thing I would actually love to see with the new GPI case 2 is kind of a script that allows it to overclock itself once it goes into docked mode. That way, we're not going to be draining that battery any faster, and with a little bit of cooling on this CM4, we could definitely take this up to 2 gigahertz just fine. But, you know, if you were overclocking on battery, that battery would drain so fast, so having a script that automatically allows it to overclock itself when it goes into dock mode would be really awesome. So overall, I do think that this is a welcome upgrade to the GPI case line. We've got that CM4 in here with a lot more power. I would have definitely loved to see at least one analog stick on this unit, but I think they kind of substituted that for HDMI out. That way you could connect your own controller to a bigger display. But you know, without that analog stick right out of the box, it's going to turn off a lot of people. So it would have been really nice to see one here. This is going to be launching very soon, and I will leave a few links in the description. You can pick it up on Amazon, and there's going to be two SKUs. You can get the deluxe kit with the dock included for $89.99, and you can pick up the base model with no dock for $79.99. But remember, you still have to add your own CM4 module and a micro SD card, so it can get quite expensive by the time you're finished with it. 
And there's one more button on this thing I forgot to mention. It's actually the sleep button on the top here or power save button. Basically, it's just going to put it into sleep mode when you press it once, you press it again, it'll wake it back up. That way you don't have to completely shut it down when you're done playing every time. And before I get out of here, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get this micro SD card out and the CM4 module itself. I've got a little spudger here and uh, you don't have to take out any screws whatsoever. It's going to pop right out. That way, when you get it, you can pop it right in. I mean, it's very easy to assemble this unit. So that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the all-new Retroflag G-Pi Case 2. I'd actually like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know, uh, you know, what it's missing. Are you going to skip it? Are you excited about it? Are you going to get one? Or, you know, you're just going to write it off completely because it doesn't have an analog stick built in. Either way, I'm super interested to know your thoughts, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to learn more or if you're interested in picking one up, I'll have a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.